We often take everyday tasks for granted, like speaking or typing, without fully understanding the complexity behind these actions. Facilitated or augmentative alternative communication offers a way for individuals to compensate for the loss or lack of ability to communicate independently. Joining us with more on this topic is Stephen Kataya, speech pathologist at Northern Tides Therapy. Stephen, I want to thank you for joining us. And yes, when talking about facilitated communication, can you kind of expand on that and the mechanics of what it is? Sure. So facilitated communication, it was intended to help give people a voice who aren't able to communicate verbally um, and so the idea behind it was to put this keyboard or some sort of device in front of them and assist or facilitate kind of holding up their hand and give them the ability to type certain sentences or words just to kind of help them communicate um, initially because they are not able to do that verbally. Yeah and so what disabilities and conditions commonly would benefit? from that, right? Sure, it can be a variety of them. So they can vary from developmental disabilities, which are, you know, at birth, you don't quite, you weren't born with the ability to do certain things because of certain diagnosis, but they can also be acquired. Mm -hmm. So something that happens as a result of a stroke or an accident or something happens down the line that you lose the ability to communicate. And so these facilitated communication or alternative ways to communicate are put in place to kind of help you to get that message across and to be able to communicate with people despite something that has happened or the lack of the ability to do that in the first place. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about, you know, kind of putting a keyboard in front of someone and like moving their hand, there's some ethical concerns that come up with that. Can you speak to some of those? With facilitated communication by holding their hand up, um, you the idea is to have them type that independently without you being able to kind of guide them in any sort of way. Um, and there's the concerns with that are, whose voice is it really doing the typing? Even if it's subconsciously, where the person that's facilitating that individual, they don't mean to be putting their message in and to be guiding their hand in a way to spell out what they want, um, but it can still happen, right? And when, without them even realizing it. And then in turn, if you do have some people that want to communicate for them, they can manipulate what they're actually saying. Yeah, and so is this, uh, like what's the scientific consensus on facilitated communication? Is it, is it something that is in, in the world of you know, speech pathology and all these things, is it something that is coined as something that works? Or is it kind of debunked? Yeah, so, you know, as we were talking about earlier, is not something in all the years that I've been doing this that I have ever seen used like, as an actual communication um, form for individuals. I learned about it early on when I was in graduate school and how there were some issues with it, some ethical concerns, some how effective actually is it. Um, and so I've never seen it used, especially now because there's other ways that and other modes that we can help these individuals communicate with where it takes that facilitated kind of aspect out of it. Yeah, and now this conversation is on the tail end of a Netflix documentary that just came out, Tell Them You Love Me, that follows a nonverbal man with cerebral palsy um, who was doing facilitated communication. There's a lot of issues that are talked about in this documentary, but it was this whole thing about not him not having agency, right? And so the future of not necessarily facilitated communication, but you know, augmentative alternative communication, what are some other methods that are either up and coming or that have been successfully used? Sure, so with the advancement of technology, it's, I mean, the sky's the limit, right? You yeah. never know what they can come up with. But right now, there's so many, they're coming up with so many different ways that the individual can really independently show us what they're trying to say. And so, you know, typically what we use, um, there's the direct select mode. So like you, similar, you see just touching an iPad and there's different apps that they can use. They can build sentences. They can use a keyboard app to type out what they want to say. Um, there's also eye gaze devices where if you're not physically able to move your hands or select something with your fingers, they can guide your, your pupils of your eyes and you can kind of select a button that way. Um, and the accuracy has been so much better with all the technology, which, and then now you hear about the, I don't know how far down the road this is, but with that new neural link, with that chip that's implanted, this gentleman that's able to use just his thoughts and can make the computer do what he's thinking. I mean, if you could apply that to language and if they're just thinking about the language and then they can have the device speak that for them, I mean, that would be something that would be phenomenal. Um, so yeah, really, 
you never really know with the way technology is going. <laughs> the sky is absolutely the limit. And now for someone that you know would like to uh, reach out for a speech pathologist, where can they go? Yeah, so I mean, if you just kind of Google speech therapists in Charleston, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have a lot of experience at Northern Tides Therapy with augmentative alternative communication. We also have, we, what's unique about our company is that we have pediatric and adults, where a lot of places you have to go one or the other, which it's beneficial because as people turn 18, it doesn't mean they need to stop having services, right? Especially if they've been with a therapist for a long time, that transition can be difficult. So with our practice, they are able to stay with us beyond the age of 18, which is really exciting. Absolutely, well, we will put the website for Northern Tide Speech um, down below, but Stephen, I wanna thank you so much for joining us today. No problem, thank you so much for having me. We're back after this.